When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high quality, grass-fed and grass-finished beef, organic chicken, pork raised crate free, and wild caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at ButcherBox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious, and all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips for free in every order for a year. Plus, get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash etm and use code etm to choose your free offer and get $20 off. We don't want to cheap out on our health and they save my life. No, that's not what you're doing. You're asking for a fair price. If it's good enough for Medicare, the federal government, if it's good enough for the insurance companies, it's good enough for you. Welcome to Everyone's Talking Money podcast. I'm your host, Shauna Game. There's no judgment, no dumb questions, just smart conversations about you and your money. So come on in and grab a seat. Everyone is welcome here. How would saving $1,000, $5,000, $10,000 or more on your medical bills sound to you? This is probably the most important and most impactful episode I've ever done on medical debt, and you are going to want to send this episode to absolutely everyone you know. So get this, over 100 million people are in medical debt, and it is the leading cause of bankruptcy. But as our guest, Dr. Virgie Bright Ellington, author of What Your Doctor Wants You to Know to Crush Your Medical Debt, wants you to know is how to not get screwed financially the next time you or a loved one needs a medical procedure. Unfortunately, many providers, too many providers try to uh, trick the folks living in this country who've had to interact with the medical care system. You know, they try to pull over on us. So get this, the price you're quoted for a procedure might not actually be the price you should pay. And as Virgie shares, you've got to know this one really important piece of information, something she calls CPT codes. What is this, you ask? Well, in this episode, you're going to uncover the truth of what you should pay for your medical needs, how to negotiate your medical bills down, this will blow your mind, and why over 90% of medical bills contain errors that could be costing you more money than you should be paying. You are about to learn so much that is going to rock your world. Let's start talking. Real quick before we jump in the conversation, I just want to talk to you about the sponsors of this podcast. 
You know, it's my job to bring you only the best companies and products that I believe will help you live a better life, save some time and money, and help you build and protect your cash. So to do that, I personally vet every single sponsor to make sure they are Shauna approved. These sponsors help keep this show free to you and allow us to bring on some amazing guests to help you on your money journey. So here's where you come in. I need you to do me a favor and like and support the sponsors on this show that you love so we can keep this podcast growing for years. You can find all the links in the show notes to all our sponsors, along with a special code for all of our ETM discounts and deals. Thanks so much, my friend. Into the episode we go. Virgie, welcome to Everyone's Talking Money. It's so fun to have a doctor here with us. You know what, Shauna? I just really, really enjoy what you do, and I'm just really glad to be here talking with you. Thanks for having me. I can't wait to talk to you. You've got this book that we're going to really dive into. It's What Your Doctor Wants You to Know to Crush Medical Debt. And we've done a couple episodes on medical debt in the past, Mm -hmm. and I think you know we still kind of overlook the kind of critical situation that is happening with with medical debt. And so I feel like this is always a really important conversation for us to come back to. And we know that medical debt is one of the leading causes of of bankruptcy. And I think for so many of us we we just go to the doctor, you know, we whatever insurance we have, we have whatever procedure we need to have done and we just kind of accept the fate of, you know, that's what it's going to cost us. And we don't understand our rights. We don't understand, you know, what what we can do and what we um, what we can't do. So we're, I'm going to dive into all of that. But to just get us started here, you know, what what's going on here? Why is medical debt? Um, why is it the leading case of bankruptcy? So yes, you you cur- said it correctly. You said you know it's one of the leading causes of bankruptcy. And no, you actually corrected yourself, Shauna. It is the leading cause, the number one cause of debt stress and bankruptcy in the United States, medical bills. So yeah, it's it's a huge deal. And you, you, you're just hitting it right on the head. You said, well, we don't know our rights. That adds into a big part of why we fall into, we happen, we meaning people living in the United States have medical bills. And that's a hundred million of us. I'd say that's about a third of, of folks living in this country that have medical debt. And I call debt as when you cannot pay off a medical bill in full at the end of the month. So yeah, it's a big, huge deal. So I guess the follow-up question to that is, you know, what's going on here? I mean, you say, you know, we're one serious accident or or illness away from debt or even worse. So is it that we're choosing the wrong healthcare plan? Is it that we're naively thinking, you know, this can't happen to us? Or is it just the medical system is kind of set up in a way that, you know, it's causing us this financial pain. The short answer is yes. Again, Shauna, <laughs> you're just hitting it right on the head. <laughs> it's all of the above. And I'll try to make it quick and try to just address those issues as quickly as I can. And just basically in one sentence, the reason why if people feel, oh my gosh, well, I have insurance. I don't have to worry about it. It's not a big deal. The problem is, is that if the average person can't come up, they have all these studies that show the average, and it changes from year to year, that the average person in the United States cannot come up with four or $500 for an emergency. And people with insurance, that's only half of folks living in the United States, if their annual deductible, meaning they're uninsured until they spend a certain amount, right? Then if the average emergency, you get hit by a bike, you're on a bike, you get hit, you know, while you're on a bike, you have an appendix, an emergency appendix, you know, that needs to come out. You're in the emergency room, that's costing you four figures minimum. And if the average annual deductible, if you have insurance is $1,400, and that's just for an individual. Well, there you go. You're right, effectively yeah. in debt and, and you're done. You're behind the eight ball. And that number, that annual, think of the word annual every year, deductible, the clock starts every January 1. So if you have the <laughs> the misfortune of getting hit by a bike, you know, on December 30th, and then on January 2nd, your appendix ruptures, you know, this <laughs> life is just, it's not, not fun. fun. Yeah. <laughs> so what is causing these these prices to keep, you know, getting getting bigger and bigger. I mean, I, you know, 
I've had many procedures over my lifetime and you'll you'll get the the statement from your health insurance company and you'll look at how much they were charging versus you know how much your your health insurance paid and it's just kind of like crazy. I remember I was in the hospital once and there was an itemized list for like bandages and I can't remember the number I'm making this up but it was like you know $100 for you know a bandage or something like and yeah. I'm just thinking, this is ridiculous. You know, why is this like? Why is this perpetuating? So there's a couple of reasons. So the back in the let's say 2010, when ACA, the Affordable Care Act, what some people call Obamacare, or the federal marketplace, when that came into being, when that became federal law. The law required that the insurance companies, the for-profit publicly traded insurance com- health insurance companies in the United States can no longer exclude people with pre-existing conditions. So when I say publicly traded, that means that they are traded on, on Wall Street, right? They're traded in the stock exchange. And just to try to make it simple... At the end of the 1970s, a new federal law, SEC law, came into place that a corporation, in order for it to be a going concern legally and be traded publicly in the stock exchange, it used to be that they had to be a good, quote unquote, corporate citizen. And that meant, you know, paying taxes to their their community in which they operate, the communities in which they operate. Okay, but no, in the late 60s, that law was changed saying that the number one responsibility of a for-profit, I should say, publicly traded company, corporation operating in the United States is returning profit to their shareholders. So fast forward, you now got these really expensive folks that are coming on to insurance plans and companies that they were able to keep, you know, not have, kick out and block because they cost so much money. So they got to figure out how to make money, right? Every year they've got to make more and more money. Well, they increased the percentage of once the ACA kicked in and they're saying, hey, no more pre, you can't bar pre existing conditions. What they did was they said, okay, we're going to increase cost sharing. There was such a thing. I want to say, I really don't remember, Shauna, hearing about co-insurance before I'd say the last five to seven years. So they came up with a thing called a thing called co-insurance, which is a fancy name for saying, hey, we'll pay a percentage if we decide to cover it. If we don't decide to cover it, you're on the hook 100%. That's just you. You know, you know, it sucks to be you, right? But if we decide that we'll cover it, that means we'll cover, you know, 60% or 70 or 80 or 90% and you're on the hook for the rest. So they push a lot of the cost sharing of this care that used to be actually 100% with the insurance companies onto us, the patient, the American public. It's so frustrating. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's not going to get better. It's it's the system. And so the the providers have to when I mean providers, the big hospital systems, anybody, any physicians, hospitals that work inside the system, if you take insurance, if you're not someone that uh, or provide services that are cosmetic like plastic surgery or something like that, then you usually end up taking insurance. If you take insurance, that means that Uh, you're going to have to figure out how to make money to keep the lights on and pay for the staff to help take care of folks. And that, that expensive, that those expenses get more expensive every year. It's just a a spiraling cycle. Yeah. (laughs) It's a cycle. Exactly. So I want to talk about what can you do if you get hit with one of these big medical bills? I know you have you have three simple steps you say to make sure you're never overpaying on a medical bill. So tell us about that. Like how can we or I guess what can we do when we get these big medical bills? So the big thing I always tell folks, well, let me back up. One of the things I I do want to talk about is that I talk about the three steps of the only right way to pay any medical bill, no matter how big or small. And I think about it in the terms of when I talk about it in three simple steps from the perspective of only half of the country, folks living in this country have insurance. A little, I would say a little bit more than half. And so I talk about the three steps because it generally applies to everybody, whether you're insured or not. So I I do want to talk about that. And 
or point that out. And yes, the three steps that you want to apply to each and every bill, no matter how big or small it is, whether you have insurance or not, is number one, making sure that you get a real bill. Most of the problem that I find is that when we get a bill in the mail, I call it a wish list. It's not a real, I don't call it a real bill anymore. I call it a statement. And I say, you know what, really it's just a fantasy. It's a wish list. That number they have and usually the upper right-hand corner is saying patient responsibility right, or UO yeah. or total owed. I call it a, a fantasy number, wishful number, a wish list because they're wishing and hoping and praying that you'll fall for it. And I say nine times, eight to nine times out of 10 in my experience, Shauna, they aren't real bills, meaning they don't have what's called CPT codes. C, think of it, stands for can't P pay T this, can't pay this codes. <laughs> okay. So what, so, is, what are these so, codes? Yeah. So CPT codes are to medical services what barcodes are to products in a retail store. So you go into a retail store, you grab something, let's say your favorite brand is Poland Springs water. You usually get the eight ounce size, but today you're particularly hungry, so you get the 16 ounce size. And when you run each through the price scanner or the checkout in the store, right, up will pop two things, a brief description of the product, and it'll have a different barcode for the 16 ounce size, a different barcode for the eight ounce size, and the price that the retailer is charging for that item. Same thing with CPT codes and medical services in the United States. Every single medical service you can think of that you get in the United States or can get has an individual unique CPT code. Well, if you don't have those codes, you don't know what you're dealing with. You don't know what services you had, and you don't know what the going rate for that is, for that particular Uh. medical service is. So whenever you get a bill or a statement... (laughs) <laughs> always look to, at the top to make sure there's something that says CPT across the top. It can say CPT or CPT codes or CPT slash what's called HCPCS, H-C-P-S-E-S, which is a type of CPT code. It has to have that across the top. And then down the left, each of the itemized things you talked about, Shana, when you had the surgery and they, <laughs> they had a line item for Band-Aids. Yeah, that needs to be in there too. There needs to be a line item for if they're going to you know, charge you for Band-Aids, they're going to have to break that out into a CPT code. And let me just say that that should have been facility fee. That should not have been in a bill to the patient because it's part of the facility fee. But that's you know for another conversation for another day. But that's a perfect example of why we need to call and ask the billing department or the patient accounts department of the facility that sent you this statement, if it doesn't have CPT codes, call that number under that wishful thinking number, that fantasy number they're asking you for, and ask for something, quote, something with CPT codes, unquote. So that's a huge, that's, you know, if you asked, if you do step one to every bill you get, it just really gets rid of a lot of the foolishness and craziness that the The unfortunately, many providers, too many providers try to uh, trick the folks living in this country who've had to interact with the medical care system. You know, they try to pull over on us. So, okay. So, wait, wait. So, wait. So, wait. Just pause for a minute. So, you're saying that the the bills that we get from most, you know, nine times out of 10 in my experience, yes. Financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah. You're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So, how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, Honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, 
in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T-A-L-K-A-N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank & Trust, member FDIC. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news... Well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps, but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. I mean, <laughs> they're not real a, bills. <laughs> we might not have to pay the number that is listed there. That is mind blowing. I mean, this is this is crazy. So if it if if it doesn't have these codes, right? We need to we need to call and ask for a statement with these codes. Yes. If it does have these codes, so what do we do with the codes? We use that information then to like look up what might be like the actual price of what we should be paying. You're always booking a headshot. Exactly. That's step two. You're going to take those codes. Once you get something in the snail mail that has CPT codes on it, then you can go to step two, which is Google each of the CPT codes to make sure that the description that pops up is something that sounds like, you know, the services that you receive, that you're not being double billed or, you know, upcharge is called upcoding is the fancy name in the medical care insurance finance world. Um, like, you know, you unfortunately, you break your arm, you go to the nearest emergency room, and they say, you know what, you're going to need surgery for this. Well, you can get it done closer to where you live. They give you a sling, send you on your way, and a month later, you get a bill, a real bill, because it has CPT codes, and a CPT code says, you know, fractured humorous intervention. Wait, what? Um, I just got a sling. That doesn't sound like an intervention. That's an example of an upcharge or an upcode, miscoding, unfortunately. So, and then while you're there in step two, you're going to take each of those codes and Google what Medicare pays for each of those services. That is Medicare. You know, a lot of people say, well, um, Medicare is for old people. I'm not over 65. I'm not old. That doesn't, that has nothing to do with me. Uh, Yes, it does. Because, Medicare is what the federal government pays for medical services. And many, many, most, most facilities and providers take Medicare. And that is the basic, lowest, fairest, most fair, I would say, 
retail price for medical services in this country. Now, the thing is, is that because it is the lowest uh, uh, price that that the government pays for a service, meaning commercial health insurance companies pay a ton more. Providers, particularly large hospitals and things like that, medical systems don't like taking Medicare. They prefer commercial insurance, but that is the fair price. Anything other than that, you're on average paying 300 to 500% more than what (laughs) Medicare pays for it. Up to, unfortunately, it's not, it sounds crazy, but 1,000 to 2,000% more is not unusual. So that's what, you know, you want to make sure you're not getting charged the MRSP, the retail, you know, manufacturer retail sticker price, right? By getting the CPT code to see what Medicare pays for that service. Okay. So, then, so then, yeah, so we have that information. How do we then use that, you know, in in a strong, like powerful way to fight (laughs) for our rights here? Yes, ma'am. You got it, Shauna. So it's step three. You're going to take it and total up all of those numbers. Let's say you had to have emergency her- uh, hernia surgery. And the statement, that wish list they gave you the first time that didn't have any CPT codes that they call the bill uh, was asking for $10,000. But when you got a real bill with CPT codes, step one, it took it to step two, total it all up. That total, what Medicare pays for each of those services of the CPT codes that you received is only $3,000. Well, in step three, you're going to take that and call back the number the, to the billing department, the patient accounts department, and say, you know what, um, that number, that uh, apologies, that bill that you sent says that I owe $10,000, but, quote, in my case, I am willing and able to pay $3,000. Who can I speak with who can help me make an interest-free payment plan that's in my budget, unquote. Wow. And so how many times, like, do you get a yes? Oh, gosh. I mean, you've done this before, Shawnee. You're (laughs) just really booking. I'm telling you. (laughs) I'm captivated. So so this is the thing. So you're going to get pushback. And this is the, the folks in the front lines are answering the phones They've been trained to get the most, right, payment. You'll say, well, if you pay us now, um, all of it will give you a 10% discount if you can pay for all of it. Well, you know, 10% discount on $10,000 is still $9,000. Who has $9,000 lying around that we can, oh, okay, and it's still, not, it's still, you're still overpaying by thousands and thousands. So yes, you're going to get pushback. Also, Shauna, the other thing is, Let's say that, you know, this is an emergency. Nobody plans to get sick or have an accident or get injured. You will say, you know what, my God, I don't have this. I just don't have, you can't get blood from a stone. I can maybe squeeze out $50 a month out of my budget. So when you call them and say, hey, I need an interest-free payment plan for $50 a month for $3,000, they're going to say two things to your earlier point pushback. They're going to say, well, you know, $3,000, that's really, really, that's like 70% off of what we care for you. We gave the care for you and or your loved one. That's, even if we did accept that such a huge discount, it's going to take us forever to get that money at $50 a month. And your answer is going to be, yeah, yeah. and... <laughs> And you know what? You're probably thinking the same thing. You're thinking there, there's no way they're going to accept this because $50 a month for $3,000 is going to take me 60 months, five years. Yeah. And this is why you're going to stick to your guns. This is why you're going to ask for it repeatedly and repeatedly ask not, can I speak to someone? That's a close-ended question. It, gives, it makes it easier for them to say yes or no. You're going to ask an open-ended question. What, when, how, who, why? Who can I speak with who can help me? Eventually, they're going to agree to it because you are, number one, being proactive. You're coming to them. They don't have to chase you for not paying the bill, right? And that means that they're likely going to save a lot of money than as opposed to having to get pennies on a dollar and sell it to a debt collection agency. So that's why eventually they're going to accept. Just keep asking, well, Okay, if you're saying you can't help me, who can I speak with who can help me because who can help me because this is all I can afford. 
So are you, are you telling them that, you know, this, this information, like I, I looked up these CBT codes, I, you know, figured out that it would, it should cost me, you know, X, Y, and Z. Are you, are you showing that, that poker hand and like telling them that information? Well, what you can say is, well, once I finally got a real bill, I looked up the codes and what the fair cost and payment and price for these are. You can tell them that if you choose, but they're the folks in the front line. They don't know that. They don't care. They're, they're just, their job is to try to get you to pay as much as quickly as possible. So they don't really care. Right. But I do want to plant this in the back of your mind. The reason why you really want to stick to your guns and you're in the right is because when in a provider sends a bill, it's called a claim, fancy name for a bill from a provider to an insurance company. When they send a claim for the services they gave you as, as their patient to the insurance company, of which you're a member, do you think that they're going to send them anything that does not have CPT codes? No. An insurance company be like, well, you never sent us a claim. You maybe sent us some documentation, but you never sent us a claim. If it doesn't have CPT codes, it's not a claim. Well, Shauna, if they don't, they, providers don't send anything, statements expecting to get paid to insurance companies that don't have CPT codes, why do they send it to the patient? Why do they send two completely different quote unquote bills to the patient for the same services? Why? Because it works. We fall for it 99.9% of the time because we don't know better. Yeah, t- t- talk to me a little bit about this because you know I- I'm imagining that I mean all of this information is just it's it's mind blowing and so powerful. But you know there's still a fear I think that a lot of us have with the medical community, especially if we're talking about money and we've had a procedure and there's a whole you know something that goes on in our brains. Well, you know we we got care like we maybe this is the fair price. Should I really negotiate my health care like? Can you walk us through like any sort of tips to kind of get our our brains to a place where we can feel comfortable doing this? So I I just have to say, I'll just cut to the chase, Shauna. I really believe that providers and medical finance systems count on that. They count on the person, the average American living in this country We love our nurses. We so appreciate our doctors. They save the lives of us or our loved ones. And they know, when I say they, big providers and the the finance companies and credit card companies know this. They know that this is the way we're thinking. We're grateful and we don't want to like, well, we don't want to cheap out on our health and they save my life. No. That's not what you're doing. You're asking for a fair price. If it's good enough for Medicare, the federal government, if it's good enough for the insurance companies, it's good enough for you. You should, you have the right by law, by federal law, you have the right for a bill or statement that has CPT codes. And that's by HIPAA law. People think it's a privacy law, but it's actually, it has the name, not privacy. And the P in HIPAA is not privacy. It's actually portability, meaning it belongs to you. Anything about your medical care that's generated, including the costs, belong to you. And if the provider doesn't give it to you, then they are actually at risk for huge fines and penalties. So, and they know this. So when I call, by the way, in step one, Sean, and I say, I want a real, I want something, a real bill or something with CPT codes, and I'm getting pushback, I say, okay, I need something with CPT codes as per HIPAA federal law. Mm. So, you know, the gets to the earlier point you made, Shauna, that we have rights. It's our right for this information, for the right information. Why give me something that is incomplete about my healthcare that you're willing to give to the insurance company? You're going to give me different information depending on who's paying. So if you want me to pay my, if you want me to pay the fair amount and my insurance company to pay the fair amount because we have co-insurance, then you're going to give me a real bill and you're going to be open to saying, okay, you know what? We'll take the fair retail price, which is Medicare price. Now, Shauna, one more thing. There are people that are doing this work, meaning helping people who struggle with medical bills are not getting taken advantage of by the U.S. 
uh, by predatory U.S. medical billing who say, well, yeah, you know, we get all kinds of complaints from hospitals saying Medicare rates are not enough, prices are not enough. So they'll say, okay, we'll offer two times Medicare rate. Mm, I still offer, I still start at one at uh, the base price, not two times Medicare rate, but the actual Medicare rate. So what happens if so we get that bill, it's 10000 and we look everything up and we go, no, we think like 3000 is, is is the fair price, what we should, we should be paying. What if that is still too steep for us? Uh, you know, are there any programs or, or mm-hmm. financial assistance or anything available to us if we get to that number and we're still like, man, still can't pay that number? Shana, you, you, this is not your first rodeo. You've done this before. You, you're absolutely right. Thank you for bringing that up. Yes. So 65% of every hospital in the United States are called nonprofit. I don't call them that anymore. I call them what they are, which is tax exempt, because the nonprofit, many nonprofit facilities do really egregious things to try to get people to give them more revenue. And it is just, it's just semantics. And it means that by federal law, a tax exempt facility is required to give sliding scale income based discounts to folks in the community in which they operate the community that the folks that they serve or that they operate and so if you get a big medical bill and you still can't afford it before you get to actually step 3 you're going to look up Google and see if the facility where you receive care is nonprofit. Then you can say, you know what, by law, they have to offer, it has many different names, but an application for financial aid, financial assistance, charity care. And you can say, okay, this is what they're going to give me the discount that they're going to offer. And then from there, you can see, okay, this is what I can pay. This is a three thousand, and they you know gave me a sliding scale discount of you know okay, well instead of ten thousand, we'll you know we'll charge you two or one. Last thing about that, and one more thing about that, Shauna, is that many people believe because they have a high income, they don't qualify for anything, and normally right, they don't, yeah, you know, yeah. Medicaid or anything like that. But I had a patient who, or a, a case actually, where someone I think her income was like almost like one hundred fifty thousand dollars gross before taxes. And she had a bill from a nonprofit medical facility for an emergency surgery that was actually her share was $10,000. She had insurance and she filled out an application and it was totally wiped away. Not, not 9,000, not 3,000, not 1,000. They said, you know what, you're good. We're wiping away because according to our, and every hospital is different. I find that frankly, the academic nonprofit facilities are the most generous and most fair. You can have two nonprofit facilities, Sean, in the same town, you know, basically down the street from each other, and they have very different sliding scales. So always ask if it's yeah, a nonprofit facility. Yeah, so this, this comes back to asking the yeah. question, right? And in yeah. being empowered to ask those questions. Because yeah. the worst the worst thing they say is no. But it, I mean, in that case, like my, like think about Think about the impact of that. Having ten thousand dollars that you potentially owed just wiped away just because you asked a question—that's yes. incredible. And by law, by the way, tax exempt nonprofit facilities have to. They're supposed to post their process and applications publicly. They're not. Many are not following that, so you have to ask. Always ask. And I know this story is really personal to you. You were a cancer patient, and you faced you know huge medical bills yourself. Did you come to kind of like an aha moment where you were like, this system is crazy and like somehow I have to, you know, help everybody else figure this out? Yeah. You know what? You know, Shana, I was, you know, I've been a board certified internal medicine physician for many, many years and I was a former health insurance executive for 10 years. And so I had a full 360 degree view of the entire U.S. medical system and the finance system of paying for it, or so I thought, until I became a patient and ran into a hospital roommate. I had a hospital roommate that I realized had been tricked into signing away her family's financial future forever, likely for a bill that she probably did not owe. They tricked her into saying basically that she would pay whatever they sent her even though she had insurance that she would pay the the balance, which is called balance billing, which sounds like she didn't owe any of it, just 
from the, you know the, the story she was telling me. And so Shauna, I'm listening to this, and when I realized what she had been tricked into doing, the curtain dropped. I saw red. I was enraged because I knew that she had been tricked into destroying her family's financial future forever for probably money that she doesn't owe. She may not owe any of it. And I thought, you know what, Virgie, don't get angry. Don't get mad. Get to getting. Do something. And that's how Crush Medical Debt was born. Wow. What a story. I mean... (laughs) What a story. Obviously, I I never want anyone to go through anything um, like cancer. But to think that going through that uh, time in your life then has led to providing all of us with, you know, really what I think is like life changing information is, um, you know, the message is not is not lost on me. So we've talked about so much. And I, I want everyone to read your book because there are just so, I mean, so many things where m- my my head was just like, what? <laughs> when what I was a what? I, yeah, yeah, what? right. <laughs> like, what is happening? Um, you know, is there anything else just kind of like big that that we haven't really talked about that you that you want to leave everyone thinking about when it when it comes to crushing our medical debt? That you have rights. That you're empowered. You have ton more power than you know. Just, you know, go to crushmedicaldebt.com and there's free resources there. And one of them is a step le- uh, checklist, rather, the three steps. Also resources to like uh, single care, which is like has the best discounts on any medication and the uh, $4.org is a great resource and patientadvocate.org are great resources when you run into free resources, by the way, when you run into situations where your care is not your concern that you're getting overbilled and you're just hitting a wall, they will actually help you and take you through the steps and write letters for you and that kind of thing and tell you what your rights are and help you get over these issues, not being taken advantage of you have the power. Well, I mean, I I just like I can't overemphasize enough how important this is for everyone and I just think how much, you know, how many conversations there are about about the medical system here in the US and you know, there's there's very strong opinions. People hate it, people love it, people want something different. You know, this is kind of always always a conversation, you know, is it, is it the, the medical field that are causing these costs to go higher? Is it the insurance companies? Like it, there's just so much around it, but we, we forget about in those conversations about the humans, you and I, that are, that are there, that are receiving the care, that are struggling through this, that are looking at these bills and, and kind of freaking out. And, and to know that we have power and rights and to know that we can do something about it is so important. So, I mean, I would just love for you to tell everyone who's listening. You just you just rattled off a few of them, but tell everyone listening if they want to connect with you, if they want to grab a copy of your book, Crush Your Debt. Um, where do they find you? So, any place you know, Amazon or any place, or, you know, Barnes and Nobles, any place dot uh, com where you can you buy your books. So you can go to the site and it'll put you crushmedicaldebt dot com and click through, and it'll take you to where you can buy the book. The the thing is, you know, um, at the end of the day, the, you know, I said, yeah, you know, we, we need to know our rights. And the reason why I do this work, and we talked about it, Shauna, that, you know, how I got started doing this work and what led me to say, you know what, this is crazy. It has to stop today is that it doesn't have to be this way, but this is a system that we have. Yes. We're, you know, there's so much controversy and, in the meantime, it's going to take you know 50 years before we get a system where we can afford our bills and it doesn't bankrupt us. But in the meantime, that's a long time. Don't let it don't let it destroy your financial future. Don't let it destroy your life. And I say, you know what? Yeah, if medical bills is the number one cause of bankruptcy, debt, and stress in the United States, and what's the number one cause of divorce? Money problems, right? financial problems and differences. So there's a direct relationship. If you save your money, just get the basic financial medical literacy, just learn the three basic steps of protecting yourself and those you love. That goes a long way to actually saving families and saving lives. I really just 
I can't emphasize enough how life-changing this conversation is, or at least I think so. So my husband, Jeff, he just had a procedure and we had to actually prepay before he went to the hospital and it wasn't cheap. So I actually cannot wait to get that statement and look for those CPT codes and then figure out what we actually should have paid. I'm, I'm going to be pretty enraged if we actually overpaid, but as Virgie says, we probably did. So I hope this episode inspired you to be more of an advocate for your healthcare and really uncover what you should be paying. Imagine having medical debt that you just didn't need to have, or by asking like a simple question, having that medical debt wiped away. It's just it, it literally is mind-blowing to me. So you can connect with Virgie and buy a copy of her book, Crush Your Medical Debt, over on her site, crushmedicaldebt.com. And I already said it in the opening to you, this is an episode you need to share with absolutely everyone you know. You can head to the show notes for all the links to our episode guest, as well as the sponsors that make this show possible. I'll see you back here in a few days, my friend, for a brand new episode. Whatever you're saving up for, a CD from Sandy Spring Bank lets you grow your savings at a guaranteed rate. Right now, earn interest at 4.5% APY on an 8-month CD special or 4.25% APY on a 14-month CD special. Learn more at sandyspringbank.com slash CD specials. Minimum opening deposit to earn the annual percentage yield is $500 for the 8-month CD special and $2,500 for the 14-month CD special. Member FDIC.